tech reviews are just broken. A new phone or laptop or camera or these days vacuum cleaner hits and suddenly our feeds are filled with like 300 blog posts or podcasts or videos about it because that's when a company agrees to give a reviewer early pre-release access to a product in exchange for the reviewer agreeing not to release anything about that product until a predefined, a predetermined date and time. And ostensibly, originally, that was to make sure the reviewer had enough time with the product to draw an informed opinion about it, but mostly to make sure newspapers had enough time to file and edit and physically print and ship and sell all of the reviews without anyone having to worry or stress about anyone else trying to just sneak an advantage by publishing early just to be first. There were also very few embargoed reviews for any product back then. Famously, only four outlets had the original iPhone at launch. Smaller papers would follow along eventually and magazines, which took longer to publish back then, but some also took longer to review. It wasn't uncommon for the big publishers to have full-on labs where they had dedicated teams run products through a gauntlet of tests. That was about it. Then the internet happened. Bloggers and podcasters and video creators, a few from traditional media and journalism backgrounds, but most just ready to tear all of that down and flip it all around. And some companies adapted really quickly to that. Others just excruciatingly slow. Some of those companies only, or at least initially, cared about the numbers. How many hits your website got, how many downloads for your podcast, how many subs or views for your video. And if you hit whatever industry threshold that they considered important enough, you were in, that was it. And this was especially true if they had big PR teams or a mix of external or internal PR or local PR trying desperately to manage the expectations of a headquarters outside the US. But others only cared about the person and it didn't matter how many hits or downloads or subs or views, just the vibe, the relationship and the specific audience they wanted to reach or influence in the way they wanted to reach and influence them. For even the biggest companies in the world that still somehow had tiny, tiny press teams, being hyper selective and going deep rather than wide was the only way that they could work. And of course, when a company is doing well, they can afford to be way more selective and harder to reach because everyone is desperately trying to reach them. And when they're not doing so well anymore, they become a whole lot more generous, desperate on their side even, because no one is trying to reach them anymore. And embargoes are also starting to get just weirder. Instead of a week or 10 days, sometimes they shrink down to 24 hours, even less. Now companies will even do split embargoes. Like you can only do hands-on and read out the specs for the first one, and you have to save the review and the opinions for a second one. And that feels fine to me when the first one is literally in the hands-on area right after an event. It feels really organic, really fresh, but less fine when they've shipped you the product and it's just because the software isn't working yet, but they still want you to get a video up. Or the one that still really, really confuses me is when they pre-brief people before an event, let them do hands-on, and then embargo it for exactly when the event starts. So then I don't know whether to watch the event or watch what is probably a way more succinct hands-on video. Please just figure that part out at least. Even the companies who slowly, bit by bit, year after year, started seeding more and more review units, which was amazing in terms of access and diversity. Instead of the same 10 to 12 people, we started getting a wide array of 20, 40, 60 people, more sometimes. And in some cases, we absolutely got better as well, fresh takes and fresh approaches. But in others, we just got more, like five more reviews trying to be exactly MKBHD or unboxings trying to be iJustine. Because the flip side of expansion is back when there were only like a half or dozen reviews, each of those reviews got a ton of traffic and shares because they had exclusivity, tens of millions of views, thousands of tweet shares. But now when two dozen hit, three dozen hit, all of that attention gets divided up. 
Most people still read The Verge or The Wall Street Journal, watch MKBHD or iJustine, and a few other of their personal favorites, but no one reads or watches them all. Nobody can. And at the same time, most of the hot new products, the ones that drove all of those hits and downloads and views over the last decade, aren't quite so hot or so new anymore. So now we have some people who are getting desperate and just catastrophizing every product launch, literally spreading disinformation, basically becoming malware just to keep getting clicks and see my toxic benchmark culture video for a lot more on that. But also we still have a lack of real innovation from pretty much everyone involved, companies and reviewers, myself very much included, because there are new formats and new versions of the classics popping up all the time. Ryan Trahan just reinvented the vlog. And it's especially frustrating because I think there's still just a huge market for those deeper, nerdier dives the ones that Enantec did and LTT Labs might start doing again. Literally remove the rage bait and focus on the facts. Also day in the life as well, like Unlocker does or like Jacqueline started doing. And Joanna Stern is just endlessly, supremely creative with everything she does. And I absolutely think there's room for a new Walt Mossberg for a massively mainstream reviewer who understands that even really, really smart, really, really intelligent consumers, some of them do not care about the technology, about the specs, about the details at all. And they just want to know how the product is going to work for them and which one they should buy. And if I hadn't unexpectedly just switched careers and pivoted this channel, innovating on the review format was going to be my big focus for the year, inspired by Justine's last big phone review, where she kind of took us along as part of the discovery process. That was going to be my plan for the review with lives and shorts all along the way, because honestly, I saw an existential crisis, a threat coming. How long before tech companies figured out they already had tech audiences and started looking for something more instead of MKBHD and The Verge? They just started giving phones to Charlie D'Amelio so her bazillion followers would see them first on TikTok or let Mr. Beast give a thousand unreleased laptops away on event day, last to leave wins the key to the park or whatever, because it really is disrupt or be disrupted. It's blame the world, blame the audience or do something about it. And I was even trying to get companies to rethink how they handled launches and embargoes to begin with. Instead of providing samples and mandating utter silence for a week, why not just open everything up, blow everything up immediately, let everyone bring their audiences along with them for the ride, not film or photograph the first unboxing, but go live with it, post shorts and get feedback during the testing, field questions in real time, let the audience be part of the process, not just the final product. That would be a trillion times more interesting and compelling to me as a viewer than a trillion canned reviews all posting at the same time in the same way. And who knows, maybe that'll still happen. I kind of think it absolutely has to. Someone has to innovate, some company, some reviewer, someone's going to figure it all out. Someone is going to make it fresh and exciting again, because otherwise we're just going to keep getting more of the same and be less and less interested in it or more of this, which I mean, just click on the video and watch it and I'll explain why toxic tech culture made me almost want to quit and distance myself from the community entirely. It's a lot, but it's super important. So just click on the video and I'll see you there.